Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 57. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now, let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. All right, so we are here for the Class B Euro Tour. We're going to be taking the BMW M3 E92 for this one. Uh, it's B Class. Starting off with Circuit de Catalunya National Circuit, Silverstone International, Amalfi Coast, Miguelo Autodromo Internazionale, uh, and then Camino Vio de Montserrat. So let's get cracking. All right, here we go. Oh. <laughs> And I think this car ran with a V8, if I'm not mistaken. But oh my god, that is a beautiful engine and a half. So obviously, um, Forza Motorsport 3 came out at a similar time to when um, Gran Turismo PSP came out. So I obviously played Gran Turismo PSP in 2009. I had my PSP in 2009. Um, it was sort of Christmas 2009, so it went on into 2010. Um, I obviously had that. That's sort of what got me properly into racing games. Um, then when it came to 2010, I sort of got... Um... What was it? Gran Turismo 5 on the PS3. And I think it was for my birthday, 2011. I got my Xbox 360. But obviously, Motorsport 4 hadn't come out yet. So I played Motorsport 3 like crazy for about six months. I think that's the timeline that I remember, but it's really fuzzy. Because it was so long ago. And since then, it's just been racing games, racing... I've loved them. But do you know what's really funny? Is Motorsport 3, I actually play through the campaign. Through, like, season play, event list, whatever. I think I'm obviously the furthest I've ever been. But I actually played through it. On Motorsport 3. We got Motorsport 4, didn't touch um, events or World Tour or whatever. Didn't touch it once. Just played free play the entire time. I enjoyed it. I sort of went through a phase where I just couldn't play Korea. I couldn't be bothered with Korea mode for Forza. So, I'm looking forward to actually completing Motorsport 4. Like, actually comp completing it properly. As it was intended. Um, the funny thing is, we're actually in, like, getting into faster cars again. But we're going to be absolutely, like, have the rug pulled out from under us fairly soon. Because we're then going to start having to go through the slower events again. Before getting into the quicker events. I do think we're going to end up doing about 140, 160 episodes. Uh, and most of all four is going to take like six months. 180, 190, maybe even 200 episodes. Would not surprise me at all. I hate everything about you. <laughs> what you? Oh yeah, so um, AMD, sorry, not AMD, Intel's revealed their new graphics card. It's coming out soon. It costs about 300 quid. It's a pretty cool looking graphics card. I actually think the new Intel graphics card with the RGB looks really good. Compared to NVIDIA's and AMD's cards, 
Intel's card looks the best. Um, but what's really cool is there's a new encoding called AV1. Apparently. I haven't looked too much into it. But apparently it increases uh, visual quality of rendering. While also using about 60% of the bandwidth. So instead of running something at uh, 5,000 kilobits a second, you would get the exact same quality out of 3,000 kilobits a second. Um, which means one of two things. Either the same quality stream for less internet, or less bandwidth, or less memory, or less storage, whatever. Um, or higher quality for the same amount. Whichever way you want to look at it. You can look at it both ways as well. Um, for me, it's good because it means less bandwidth. Um, so faster uploads when it comes to YouTube content when I'm rendering. Uh, and it also means when it comes to the latest stuff, higher quality, you know, that would also be very nice. Um, but yeah, apparently the Intel's AV1 encoding is out of this world compared to NVIDIA's at the moment. However, NVIDIA allows you to do two encoding sessions, from what I've heard. It's got dual AV1 encoders, whereas Intel's only has one. But if I was really using AV enco AV1 encoding for, like, my gameplay, I would only need one. The rest of them can all be done through H.264. So I'm very much debating whether if I buy, like, a second PC for, like, recording content that that would have an Intel card in it. Really debating it. Um, the only problem with it is the TDP is quite high compared to other cards, like Intel cards. You can definitely tell based off the TDP, the size of the card, and that it, it was intended to be a 3070 card. That was fighting with a 3070, but because it just wasn't powerful enough, they ended up sort of aiming it towards the 3060. But it still uses more power than a 3070. So, it's the only downside. But if it does a good job at encoding, I'd still use it. <laughs> like. But there is like a video comparison um, comparing like AV1 and MVANC. And it is much better. Much, much better. So if I can move to AV1, I may do it at some point. I might do it for Motorsport 4. Leave Motorsport 3 as it is and then start researching it. But I would have to confer with other people to make sure that I'm not <laughs> mistaken. Uh, we now got a 50% discount on driveline upgrades by BMW Motorsport. And we got a 50% discount on intake manifold and throttle body upgrades by BMW. Oh my god. Alright, here we go. I like the look of the rims on this BMW, to be honest. I I'm a huge fan of, like, 2009 era BMWs. Like, I think the last good looking BMW is probably, like, 2017. Every BMW beyond that has been meh. Except for the M8. I think that brand new M8, Competizione or whatever it is, is stunning. That new BMW M8, though, is a very nice looking car. Ah, wow, wow, wow. That's good. I'm breaking a sweat. It's all right. I'm breaking a sweat. 
I'm breaking a sweat. I said it's all right. I said it's all right. I'm breaking a sweat. That's good. Uh -oh. Bad. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. I can't wait for a day when encoding a video means that we don't actually lose any quality from it. Once we get to that stage, we can properly start, like actually having some really good quality gameplay I'm breaking a sweat I said it's all right <laughs> There we go. Robbie, good. Du, 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 du. Dun, dun, dun. A tarantula. About to get stung. Not bad. What is your dog trying to kill the other dog now? <laughs> Again. <laughs> A tarantula. Wow, they had to be separated or something. 
Don't know the day she tried to murder him. Ah, fair enough. That dog's got mental, though. I wonder what's going to happen to it. I hope they can get along. <laughs> I kid you not. One of, one of the things about um, Turkey that I hated, and I hated because I didn't want to do it. So, in Turkey, there's a lot of stray animals um, that sort of roam around. Um, obviously, in the UK, we don't really have stray animals, but there was lots of stray dogs. Oh god. Oh god, hiccups. There's a lot of stray dogs, stray cats and whatnot. And there were these stray cats that would sit outside of our hotel room. We'd obviously feed them because, you know, they're stray cats. Um, but there was this one cat that absolutely loved attention. Um, and I kid you not. If it wasn't for the fact that you weren't allowed to do it, I would totally have shoved that cat in my suitcase and taken it home. Easily. If there were, if it wasn't for the fact that you weren't allowed to do it, and that airport security would get very, very pissed off with you, I totally would have taken it home with me. 100% would have brought a cat home with me. I was this close. <laughs> I'd have been like, so chat, this is cat. <laughs> I didn't even name it, all right? I didn't even name it because I didn't want to get an emotional attachment to the cat. <coughs> but yeah. I was this close to taking a cat home. <laughs> I know for a fact if I get a new car and the speakers are terrible in it, the first thing I am upgrading is the speakers. Like, I don't care if there's other stuff that needs fixing. The speakers are the important part. But I'll keep the old ones because if the car goes to shit, then I can put the old ones back in, get rid of the car, and then use the good ones for, like, a new car or whatever. I don't know. New exhaust is a good idea. Put a new exhaust on, you might finally get above the 100 horsepower mark with that car. <laughs> do, 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 do. Gotta be careful with the um, insurance though, wouldn't you? Because if you get caught without it and you haven't claimed it to your insurance, you're in big trouble. And if you tell your insurance, they're gonna recharge you like big time. So, honestly, our government wants to try to stop us from having cars. Like, I genuinely think they don't want us having cars. It's really strange. Ooh. Ah, shit. Had his insurance policy cancelled two days before it ended because his black box caught him speeding. Jesus Christ. No matter what insurance I get, I won't have a black box. I refuse to have a black box. Yeah, I, I would get minus five scores as well. Not because I'd be speeding, but because I'd accelerate so aggressively, they'd think I was speeding. But to, to be honest, my driving instructor has taught me that get up to speed. It doesn't matter how you do it, just get up to speed. 
There have been a couple of moments where he's gone like, maybe not that quick. <laughs> like, I've... I've had a couple of moments where I've gone like red line in first gear and then red line in second. <laughs> Speed it up. But come on, if you're given the opportunity, you gotta do it. <laughs> I mean, I have wheel, wheel spun once. Um, but the only reason was because I was trying to not get undertaken at a traffic light. I obviously know that that's not sort of how Undertaken works when you're at a traffic light, but still. I didn't know that at that time, so I proper, like, wheel spun and just floored it. Yeah. The thing is, when a, when a car's front wheel drive is kind of pointless wheel spinning because it does absolutely nothing. Honestly, front-wheel drive cars are the most pointless cars in the world. For your power, turn the music louder, let me be like, ooh. But yeah, I, I don't have a clue what my first car is going to be. But my test is on Friday. Not this Friday, next Friday. Because obviously my actual test got cancelled. Which is fucking annoying. So. Do you know the one thing that really pisses me off? So obviously my instructor didn't know it was cancelled. That was half mistake, half his fault. I don't know. But the part I'm more pissed off about is the fact that the DVSA can cancel a uh, driving test and then not fund the driving lessons afterwards? Like, what if I pass? So I will have spent an extra 200 and odd pound on driving lessons to be able to keep on top of what I knew because they canceled it, you know. Oh, Bob. I need wheels to spin because I go flat to the floor instantly to get away from work as fast as possible. Oh, that's fair enough. That is fair enough. Yeah, I want to get... Um, I want to just pass. Because even if I don't get a car for a while, for like six months, a year, whatever, I would like to pass. Because once, once I pass, I don't have to drive for like... I can sit on my license for 20 years and then start driving it. That's the thing that confuses me. That We have all these... Oh, shit. That's not what I wanted to do. We have all these strict tests to make sure that you're good at driving and all that. But then... Once you pass, you can literally forget everything. Not drive for 20 years and come back to it. And according to the government, you're fit to drive. That's what I don't get about the driving tests in the UK. It's so backwards. Like, the countries that give you licenses and a pass for literally doing nothing makes more sense because you literally do nothing. You get a pass and then you just drive whenever you want. That makes more sense than doing all these lessons, all these tests to prove that you're a good driver to then not have to do tests to prove you're still a good driver. You can just go to shit and still be legally able to drive. It's so backwards, it's unreal. Shit's mad. I know, shit's mad. I'm still a firm believer that every 10 years after you take your test, you should have to do another test to prove that you are still a competent driver. And if not, you can have your license taken away. I still think that should be a thing. Because if you're not able to drive safely, by license... All right, here we go. But yeah. So I have some friends that would go with me. 
And also I'm working like six days a week right now. Jesus Christ. I wouldn't be able to work any more than like 40 hours a week. Because I would feel like I'm working too much. And I'm not enjoying um, life at that point. Yeah. Like, by all means, I understand working over... T That's the one reason why I won't do apprenticeships, is because of the fact that they pay so little that I would have to do extra time just to be able to feel like I'm earning money. By that point, you can't spend it because you're working too much. Ah, yeah. But you've been on one for, like, two years, haven't you? My parents are just like, oh, you should do an apprenticeship. And I'm like, fuck off. I don't want to get paid ridiculously um, low amounts of money for my work. Even if I'm getting so-called free education for it. <laughs> Fair enough, Cotto. That was some good timing. Yeah, it all depends. <laughs> Shit. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No more. Like, I, I, me, myself, I'm not really that fussed. When it comes, obviously, I can now go back on the job search because I'm back off holiday. I had a couple of job roles that I could have taken, but because I was going away, they were like, oh, yeah, we'll bring you afterwards. Tips as well, 145 and get paid on Friday, so going well. Not bad at all, not bad. Baby, don't hurt me. Baby, don't hurt me. Is it you? I don't know. But yeah, I'm. Um I think at this point, I really don't care what job it is, as long as I'm not in a food place. Because again, food places piss me off. Mobile Twitch doesn't work properly. What do you mean? I've never had a problem with mobile Twitch. Just watch the video and type. I never buy anything off mobile Twitch because I know it's um, got extra charges on it. The Google tax or the Apple tax. What is love?
don't hurt me. Meow, meow. No more. 550 is not too bad. I know for me, I would like to be earning a thousand plus. A month. So. If I'm earning a thousand plus, I don't care. So for example, um, if I was to do Twitch full-time, um, I would need to be earning about $1,000 a month from Twitch. Which is surprisingly a lot easier for everyone who's watching to do than it sounds. Because if everyone who watches subscribes and puts in a dollar every time they watch... It would quite easily be at least 50% there. Easily. So. Energy. So yeah, it is quite quite an easy goal for us to actually get. I got 40% discount on displacement upgrades by BMW Motorsport. It has been a while since I've heard this. Uh, hang on, let me check. Nim, 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 nim. You should come through in a minute. Oi! Why are you tap my bunda? There's another hum humble bundle, actually. PC Building Simulator 2 is now available for pre-purchase on the Epic Games Store. Which is really shit because it's not available on Steam, which means you can't get it on the Steam Deck easily. It's a pain in the ass to do. That's the one reason why I don't like Epic Games and Origin and all that fighting for a store. Steam is a very centralized platform. So, sure... Origin can have their store where they put their EA games. Origin's fine, actually. Because Origin offers all their games on PC, on Steam, and on the Origin store. They don't really care where you buy it. But they know that Steam is a very centralized and very popular store. That people will want to buy their games on there. And especially now with Steam Deck... It's even more important that Origin keep doing that. So, Origin and EA, well done. Never thought I'd say this, but well done, EA. Like, they're in the good books right now. And in fact, I think EA is doing better than Ubisoft at the moment. Because Ubisoft have delisted all of their games from 2018 onwards. So, all games from 2018 pretty much do not go on... Um, Steam anymore. I uh, just got that email, Cotto. Yeah, I've, I've got the money back. Thank you very much, good sir. Do, 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 do. Um, but yeah, Ubisoft doesn't have any of their games on there anymore. Xbox are bringing their games to Steam now, so good on Xbox. Ah, uh, I've gone wide. I'm 
I'm hoping that Blizzard gets their launcher shut down though, so all the Call of Duty games and that go back on Steam. But I think once this acquisition goes through between um, Activision and Xbox, it is going to shut down. It's the same with the Bethesda store. Bethesda, they shut down that store and put all their games on Steam. Nope. So all of the COD games for uh, up until, I think, World War Two. I think all of them are on Steam. And then they stopped doing it and they did them on the Blizzard launcher instead. Um, the only other game is the brand new Modern Warfare 2 is actually available on Steam. Which sort of hints towards what I was saying that Xbox is going to bring all those games back onto Steam. But there is the potential that the Blizzard launcher just gets shut down altogether. And all of those games are on Steam. And they'll transfer it all over to Steam. I, I don't see why Xbox wouldn't. They did it with Bethesda. And people didn't really care too much. They should do it with Call of Duty as well. Because obviously they can still have Blizzard accounts. Where you sign in and access your Call of Duty stuff. They just don't have the store. Or the downloader. They just do it all through Steam. <laughs> hey, at least you enjoyed it, Kono. I may be getting it as well, to be honest. The only problem is, you won't be able to play it on Steam. Steam Deck, sorry. Um, yeah. I think I'm more than likely going to get it, but the only problem is the game won't be playable on Steam Deck because anti-cheats don't work on Linux. So if Call of Duty has their own anti-cheats, um, it won't, it won't work. Never be a day where I'll be a friend. Yeah, it's fully cross-platform. All of the Call of Duties have been cross-platform from Modern Warfare 1 back in 2019. But 2020 game, 2021 have all been cross-platform as well. I can't see why 20, the new one won't be cross-platform too. It'd be a stupid idea not to make it cross-platform. The new Warzone is going to be coming out soon as well. I just hope that Call of Duty for, like, Warzone 2, um, they do, uh, what's it called? I would love to see them do, um, all of the Call of Duty games under one application. So you download Call of Duty. It, even if it's, like, you download Call of Duty Warzone 2 as an application, that has Warzone... And then you can download the extra games. So you can download Modern Warfare 2, Call of Duty 2023, Call of Duty 2024. However many they decide to make on this life cycle. If they could do that and make it a single application. Because that means no loading times between them. Or not like, oh you've got to shut down the game then load another game. There's none of that. That would be nice. I think that is also this episode done. Not bad. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Oh.